Hello everyone and thank you for attending my presentation. I'm Jean-Baptiste Chassin. I present a subject about impact of junction properties on the modal behavior of assembled structures on behalf of Lhomme and Renault. And I work with Charles Pesra, Adrien Pola, Frédéric Aplitzer, Laurent Polak. Let's talk about the context. We start with three substructures which uh, have some uh, vibration uh, behavior and acoustic radiation. We, we say that uh, these substructures are collated between FEM and, uh, and uh, experimental results. But when you assemble all, all of them, you, you start to have some differentiation, especially in medium and higher frequency, and which is caused by the junction uh, with induced stiffness and damping, non-linear phenomena like friction and wave conversion. The main goal here is to relate junction effects to the modification of the vibroacoustic behavior of the In order to understand this difference, we'll use the modal synthesis method, which is divided in three main steps. So the first step is to study the uncoupled modal behavior or, of each substructure. The second step is to define the junction in terms of forces and the last step is to um, study the steady state frequency response. In order to understand more simply the mechanism of motion conversion, we limit ourselves to the study of beams with different characteristics. We are interested in compression and bending movements while torsion is neglected. On the bottom left of the slide, we describe the bending motion by the by the euler bernoulli equation with a modal series having two rigid components and an infinity of modal deformation. At the bottom right, we use the wave conversion and another modal series to describe the compression movement. You have also some examples of the first modal shape you can have in flexion and in compression movement. Now, Let's add a viscoelastic pad. This pad is described using a combination of Kelvin Voigt with stiffness and damping according to the characteristic of the pad. As we are in harmonic regime, the damping is expressed according to a ratio eta directly in the Young modulus. This stiffness becomes complex. We describe the pad only by distribution of force at the junction. We then have a punctual stress association uh, proportional to the difference in displacement between the two beams. Because of the difference of neutral line between the two beams, we also have a lever arm. Here is a representation of, uh, of all the forces in these assembled structures. The lever arm moment is the first origin to the modal conversion of different movements we study. As we said, the first origin of the motion conversion comes from the difference of the neutral line, line between the two beams due to the non face to face configuration. The second origin comes from the thickness of the beam. Indeed, when a beam is in motion, micro angles appear and are directly proportional to the half thickness of a beam as described in the bottom right figure. If this phenomenon does not disturb the definition of a normal displacement, it nevertheless adds an extra displacement in traction. However, this angle is defined from the bending movements and it's found in the compression equation. Here we have the second origin of a motion conversion. As you can see here, the delta t is described with both traction and bending movement. So now let's start from the complete system and add harmonic point excitation. Let us also take again the equation of motion, initially homogeneous, to which we add the force uh, at the junction. This system of equation is then coupled by the distribution of the two origins that we previously identified. So now let's talk about the Ernoui 
Euler Bernoulli equation and the wave equation. Uh, if you use the model approach, you will get the mass and the stiffness model matrix, as you can see here, with the uh, stiffness intercoupling movement. So the, the forces became term of damping and uh, induce uh, stiffness. And you get finally the, the global matrix system here, uh, which quantify the impact of intermodal coupling between flexion and traction compression. So if, if we focus on each quarter, the first quarter is, um, is uh, a definition of intercoupling in flexion with normal junction effort. If you focus on the second quarter, you, you study intercoupling from flexion to traction with the non face to face configuration. In the third quarter, you uh, study the intercoupling from traction to flexion with junction effort location. And the last quarter is intercoupling within traction with junction effort location, as you can see here. So, if you take some example of uh, representation of the complex stiffness matrix. You start with a face-to-face -face configuration. You, you have only term in the uh, first quarter and the last quarter. But if you start to having a non-face-to-face -face configuration, you have some very low term here in, in traction. And uh, if you wider the sharing zone between the two beams, you start having some, uh, some, uh, some big uh, big value in the uh, in the second and last in the third quarter of uh, this metric. We can also talk about the acoustic radiation of the assembled structures. So we start with some assumption. We start with an infinite environment for no wave con return consideration. We also take into account the light with light free consideration. So there is no effect of the acoustic environment on the di dynamic of the behavior, dynamic behavior of the assembly structure. Each beam is baffled, and there is no other uh, acoustic sources. So we uh, determine uh, the global radiation uh, power of uh, the assembly structures with this uh, this uh, statement. Uh, so we need the parietal the pressure from the relay integral, as you can see here, and the velocity, the parietal velocity of the assembled structures. So now, in order to relate the junction properties on the vibroacoustic behavior of the assembled structures, we'll have a parametric study. So, start with this assemble and an excitation, a traction excitation in the first bin. We exit at the exact same point here with an accelerometer and we uh, use a parametric study of the assembled structures by pad Young modulus variation from 0 to 3 JPA. Then we extract velocity field for each Young modulus value and the power radiation of the assembled structures. Let's put this illustration at the top right and start our measurement. By hammering, we obtain a response up to 12 kHz corresponding to the first three compression responses for a specific Young modulus value. Now let's stack all 50 responses uh, obtained in a waterfall representation. We can then revisit the responses corresponding to a maximum of a speed map instruction. Let's put shade of grey now and add kinetic energy indicator in order to discriminate between the compression response and the different type of of responses called hybrid uh, responses in uh, green dot here. By extracting the operational deformation at low Young modulus, we obtain a typical retraction response. At higher value, around 1.5 JPA, the response is hybrid, which is an association of movement, inflection, as well as in traction. Now let's add the bending map. From memory, we only excited in traction compression, but because of a motion conversion mechanism, we also get lower bending level response, whose maxima are, maximum are available around 1.5 JPA, where the responses are hybrid. The classification of the response is done using an, indica an kinetic indicator in pure flexion, traction, or in a combination of the two movements. We also define the threshold around 
0.8 in order to classify the responses, inflection, traction, or in hybrid responses. Now let's have a look on the radiation map where the acoustic radiation zone is around 1.5 uh, JPA where hybrid movements are present. The last map it represents response zone either in traction in red, bending in blue, or in hybrid in green. Let's, now let's take, let's take a view on the three low young modulus responses and compare this result, this result to the one around 1.5. Two things at, are not worthy. Flexural impacts the compression movement because of the irregularities we can observe in the responses, such as those surrounded. If the flexural responses are very low, at low, low joint stiffness, there is no longer the case around 1.5 JPA, with level close to those in compression. In addition, the structure radiates much more as shown in the last figure. If we extract the responses at a higher Young modulus value, we then find similar to those obtained at low Young modulus value in terms of level of the velocity field and the radiation power, radiated power, sorry, which become very low again. So we can say that movement conversion from traction to flexion leads to emergence of moderate response in bending movements, which are very random, as well as hybrid responses. So one way to act to, 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 to have an action in the hybridation is to modify the damping capacity of the pad. So by setting the a young modulus at 1.5 JPA and changing the ratio from 0 to 0 0.3, we obtain a speed fail map in traction which with a free answer where where for example the second answer is in traction because be, become only traction as you can see here. First, the radiant capacity of a solution can be significantly reduced by modifying the damping properties of a junction. In conclusion, we can say that we study a non-face-to-face -face beam configuration with a viscoelastic pad. A model synthesis has been used to check the phenomena of induced stiffness and damping, check the phenomena of wave conversion due to a non-face-to-face -face configuration. We work also on a simple structure in order to validate the strategy to study stiffness and damping mechanisms, as well as wave conversion. Next step was is to take into account non-linear phenomena like friction phenomena, apply this method to bolted junction with tribological approach. And in, purpose, in perspective, we can say that do non-linearity has an impact on modal convention? Is the radiant mode ad activated by the junction, excitation, or by other factors? how to effectiv effectively control the joint parameter in the radiation of the assembled structures. So thank you for attending this presentation and if you have any question I will be glad to answer it.